Hi guys and welcome back to the next Grace Engine Developments vlog. Um, it's Saturday today, uh, I've got plenty of little jobs to finish. So I'm going to uh, film, film all of them and see if we can make one video out of Saturday with a bit of luck. I've brought Diesel down with me, where are you Diesel? Say hello. Say hello Diesel. I bought Diesel down with me today, he wanted a, wanted a trip out so yeah he's keeping me company i've got a few jobs to do where are they first thing for this morning is these motorcycle um is these two motorcycle side cases or crank cases and what i've got to do is this one here it's been machined to take a bore squirter jet. So I've basically got to uh, copy that onto these two casings. So that's my first job. I've also got to finish Alistair's off today, which is in the engine build room. The heads are on that. I've got to machine the inlet manifold faces because he's welded a bit on to them. So that's there. And then there's a couple of other cylinder heads to do. And then if I get time, I'll do a workshop update. So on the um, motorcycle casings, what I'm doing first is clamping them down. And I'm going to do them um, both at the same time. So I'm going to clamp them both down on the mill bed together um, and the first thing I'm going to put in is this step. So I'll put the step in one and then just move the mill over, put the step in the other and then I'll change the cutter to fit the actual bore hole um, in there. And then the idea is the oil comes up here, along here and then into a, a, a bore squirter to just fire it straight into the bottom of the piston. So I've got them mounted down, I've just got to clamp them down and then we'll get them with machining. So that's the first process done on both bits. Now I've just got to bore this hole down through into the oil way. So that's both these motorcycle casings machined. And if you could see there, that just breaks through to that oil way. So all I'm going to do now is, whoops, I'm just going to put a nice little chamfer on that, give them a blow off and then they're ready for um, my customer to collect and then we're on to the next job. So the next job that I'm doing today is finishing off Franco. Um, anyone that's subscribed to the channel or watched any previous videos will remember uh, my friend Toby's Fiat 500 engine that I did a load of work on. So this is the cylinder head to it and he's converting it to big valve. Um, I've also fitted valve guides to it, new valve guides. I've ported the inlet and exhaust for him too. But what I've got to do is to fit the big valve, I need to replace the valve seats because the valves are quite a bit bigger than the original seat. So what I'm gonna do is mount it into my seat cutter machine out the four original seats and then replace them with some bigger ones and then get them all to size. Toby's then going to take it away, do some compression checks on the cylinder head and then bring it back for me to, to reface. So yeah, next job for me today is finish Franco. So the first job that I'm doing now on the Franco or Franco cylinder head is machining out the old valve seats. So I've set my cutter up to deal with the um, inlet valves first. So I've centralized the seat cutter, I've locked it all off, and now I'm just gonna start to cut. So that's the new inlet seats in Franco's cylinder head. Um, I've got to just blend that lip out a little bit, uh, and now I'm gonna fit the exhaust seats first. That's inlet and exhaust seats now fitted into Franco. And what I've had to do, because the valves are going so big, I've had to overlap um, the seats slightly. So I worked out how they needed to be. I needed to put the inlet in first, 
and see if I can drop it in the show. Um, because that would leave me enough seat on the inlet with the over, with the uh, the cut of the exhaust seat going into the inlet part, and then with the exhaust dropped in, um, it <coughs> it sits perfect. So what I've got to do now is trim the seats flat to get them at the same height, and then put the actual seating angle and get the valves in at the right depth. So what I'm doing next on the Fiat 500 Ed Franco is I've cut the seat out bigger, um, but it's cut a really big step on the um, on the seat. See if I can picture it. Just there. So luckily, because I've had this my Centronic seat cutter a fair while, I've got all different shapes for doing um, port throats and everything. So I'm gonna put one of the tools in for that. And then open up the new seat to the throat of the port where I've been gas flowing. <clears throat> so I'll, um, I'll set it up, cut this one, and then see if we can get in with the camera and, uh, and have a look. So the Centronic is all locked off now, and now I'm going to start to cut into the throat. And what I'm looking for is, as soon as I see the cutter machine the aluminium then, Then I've got it exactly where I need it. I think that's about spot on. Yeah, so what that's left me now is that's took all the throat out. And that's just left me a little bit to tickle with the, um, with the gas flowing tools just to blend that last little part in. But no, I'm quite happy with that, so let's move on to the next one. In fact, I'll show you it opened up. So that's it opened up compared to that one with the lip in it. So that would be measurable if I just grab the verniers. So that's opened that seat out by have to do it roughly because I can't get the vernier in there. 28.1 the 28.1 30.7 so we've opened the throat up by over two mil there um, which will all help the flow by the time I've just tickled this back in and made it all nice and smooth and the transition good um, yeah that would be that would be a good job so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same on this second port and then actually put the finished seat on and get the valve depth right and then move over to the exhaust. The Fit 500 head is now completely finished. Uh, Franco is what he's affectionately known as. Um, I've put big inlet and exhaust valve seats, uh, ported the inlet and exhaust ports which I think I showed them on a previous vlog, to be fair. Um, I was waiting for the guides because uh, these are oversized guides. Cut the seats down to a, a good height and then ground them all in and engraved them all so they... So Toby, who owns the car, knows uh, which way to put them back together. So I'm just waiting for Toby to come and collect the cylinder head now um, and I'm going to get on with something else.
so the, Vo the Volvo boat cylinder head, um, I'm working on that today. So what I've got to do with that now is try and, well, first job is to try and weld up the damage around that exhaust. So what I'm going to do is remove the plug. Someone's put a, an insert in it just there. So I'm going to peel that out and then I'm going to grind all this back. I'm going to grind it in here and then just try and build it up in layers. And, uh, and and try and make some good of it. I'm hoping that it does weld because because it's been used as well. It's the exhaust port. I'm I'm hoping that the exhaust gas if hasn't got into the aluminium too much. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll be okay. Well, I've just noticed that's on the wrong way around as well. So on the um, right. So on the Volvo. I've pulled out the old thread insert so I put it on my gas flowing bench and the next thing that I'm going to do is remove all this old metal from here I'm going to try and leave as a, a bit of a tip and a bit of a guide for myself an edge around here and an edge around here that way I can see where the old holes are I'm going to have to reinsert that and I'll also know when I've built it up enough ready to machine it off so let's uh, let's get it time lapsed and see what it looks like. The TIG welder keeps tripping out the fuse uh, where I'm having to put some amps in it to burn in. The easiest thing for me to do here really is uh, just move the TIG welder over to the new workshop where we've got a better voltage supply or amp supply. It's a bit of a nightmare but there we are. I'll carry on once I'm back on it. So the latest with the boat cylinder head which I was struggling to weld up well, I normally do my welding in my old workshop. You can see that the uh, the welder's now gone. Um, I've always had a water leak from here, which has always done me head in, but um, Graves and Voller have got my welder working over in my new workshop, so I'm pleased that that's another machine gone and, and over there as well. And so I've been over there today and I've been welding up where all the damage was on that exhaust port so I'm just letting that cool down now and then I'm going to mount that onto the mill machine all the way along and then replace the threads because these had time certs in or helicoils I should say so I'm going to replace the helicoils uh, tidy up in the port I might have to add a bit more weld just in this bottom corner here I hope not but the welder now it's wired up properly into some better electrics it, it, it welds better now as well so we just got uh, finish off putting a welding bench in and things like that and then that should be quite good over there So the next thing for me to do on the Volvo cylinder head is to tidy up where I've welded. Let me see if I can get you a bit closer. Where I've welded all this and built this up by a well, fair chunk. I think it was nearly uh, nearly a centimetre, 10 mil there. Um, but it's lost the shape slightly. So what I've done is off one of the good ports, so one of these three, I've made a little template like that. So 
what that enables me to do is just rest that on there and then I can uh, draw around the parts that need metal removed and then just start to tickle it away. And then what I'll also do is as I'm grinding it, I'll keep that template there and then I can just keep trying it on to see what it looks like. But yeah, with a bit of luck, hopefully within the next hour or so, it'll look more like this one here. So that's the Volvo all tidied up now. I've just cleaned inside the port as well. I've reshaped all the outer part of the port and my little uh, template that I made fits, uh, fits pretty perfect all the way around. So I'm happy with that. What I've got to do now, like I said earlier, is sort these threads out, cut the seats, give it a skim get it through the cleaner a few times and uh, get on with building it. But that's a job for Saturday. It's Friday night and I'm going home now. So uh, next bit of recording will be tomorrow. So the next thing for me to do on the Volvo boat cylinder head is assembly. I've cleaned the gasket faces up. I've skimmed it, I've cut the seats, faced the valves. Uh, I'll turn it around and show you that in a, in a minute but so the next thing I've got to do is put the uh, the valves into the cylinder head which I'll time-lapse Right, so that's the Volvo head now built up with the valves. So the next thing I've got to do is fit the buckets to set the tappets. This uses a bucket and something called a shim over bucket, which looks like this. That bit there is the bucket. And then these things here are the shims. These are all different sizes and they clip, if I find one that's fallen out, there we go. They just clip and lock into the bucket and uh, so we measure it with feeler gauges and then just change the thickness of these shims to get the tappets correct so i'll build it up and do that bit next the last job to do on the volvo apart from show you around what i've done is to set the tappets and i thought i would quickly just show you the way i do that so these are the the little biscuit shims which we either machine to a, a different thickness or a th smaller thickness or I do carry them in stock at different thicknesses. 
So what I do first on a bit of paper is write down the sequence. So exhaust inlet, exhaust inlet. And then I put the buckets in without the shims. And then I measure every shim in thousandths of an inch. And then what I do is I write that size down as I fit them. So that one's 156 thou. I'll put that into the right one. That one's 160 thou. And the reason I do this is when I first set the tappet, or go to set the tappet, if they're out, I can quickly see if manoeuvring the shims um, would get me to the size that I need to be at. And it will also let me know that if it's a 10 thou gap that's needed and I've got 16 thou, I know that I need a 6 thou larger shim. So it just makes everything a little bit quicker to look for. And I just find it quite quick to do it this way. I ain't saying it's the right way, but it's the way I do it. Then the next thing that I need to do is go back through one of the old data books and see what the tappet clearances for this should be, or the valve clearances. Two more. That's the smallest one, I think. Yep. So straight away, I've got a, a, a range of 10 thou difference between these shims anyway. So the next thing for me to do is to put the camshaft in, torque it down, and then get the feeler gauges and then measure the gap between the base circle of the camshaft, which is, I'll show you that. So what I need to do is measure the distance with the feeler gauges from the base circle of the camshaft, which is here, and the top of the biscuit shim. Definitely nowhere along here or on the nose of the cam. So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the cylinder head camshaft journals just to make sure it doesn't... Uh, snag in the aluminium and then just make sure that there's absolutely no swarf on the on the camshaft which I know there's not because it's only just come out of the wash and then very carefully just place it down then get the cam caps which once again Make sure that there's no uh, swarf or dirt on them. Bit of oil on top of the cam. And then just place them in order. They're all numbered, so it's quite easy to do. The rear's got the thrust on it for the camshaft. And then the front one, which is here, which I'll just uh, scrape the bit of silicon off it that's on there. That's it, I just need to get the nuts now and torque that down and then start to record the clearances. So I've ran through all the valve clearances on the Volvo Penta cylinder head, boat cylinder head. I've wrote down the, the shim sizes and my valve clearances. I've just looked up what the valve clearances should be. This is an AQ140A 
Volvo cylinder head. So I've now got my valve clearances. I'm now gonna calculate what size shim I need to get to these. And I make a little note of them at the side. And then I can see if I can reuse any of the, sh the, the original shims. And then if not, I've got uh, a couple of boxes here of um, extra shims, all different sizes. So then I'll have a measure up of them and see if I can use any of them in the cylinder head. So we'll carry on. So that's the AQ140 Volvo Penta cylinder head complete. I've just gone through the tappets, as you've seen on time lapse. Two of them was okay, but the others I've had to uh, put shims in. I think I was able to jiggle two of the shims about, but the rest have needed new shims. So this come in, built up, looking very worse for wear. Uh, all of this part here was missing. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, so it's been through the acid. I've shot blasted, refaced the valves, I've put a new insert here, uh, M6 by one, because it had been uh, drilled out to M8. I've cleaned the gasket faces up here. I've roughly put the cam timing where it needs to be. Like I've just said, the, the tappets are all set. So I've taken the front pulley and the oil seal out because that's the old oil seal and the customer's gonna have to put a new oil seal on it. So I've gave it a nice reface, so it's got a diamond reface on it. I've recut the inlet and the exhaust valves to 45 degrees, seat sorry, to 45 degrees. Same with the seat, reface the seat. It's been through the cleaner for, for a fair bit of time to try and get all of the carbon and crud out of it. And then the real hard work was on this part here. So, the whole head had been inserted with helicoils, which I'm not a big fan of really. They do do a job, they, they're, they're all right for that, but I, I kind of prefer proper insert. But this head had rotted away. So all the way down here was missing. So we had a few issues with the TIG welder for some reason. I think this unit knows that I'm moving out and uh, the electric started playing up. So... Uh, Graves and Voller have come over and set my TIG welder up in the new unit. And I've, I've built all this up with weld and then reshaped it all. I made a template gasket, which you saw, uh, and then reshaped all this back to the original shape. And then I had to take the Ellie coils out of these two and here uh, because they was hitting on the milling machine. And then on the mill, I've refaced this exhaust manifold face flat dressed all the edges up in my gas flowing room and uh i am really happy with the um the outcome of it i think that's a really um a really cracking repair really i'm chuffed with that i hope the customer's happy with it as well let me turn it round and get it back on the stand So that's another shot of the repair. So what I'm going to do now is put some build lube on the cam train just to um, protect it as it gets oil pressure up. This is using the cleavite that I 
use on most engine builds. This and the, the Lucas is pretty good. And then the other thing that he wanted me to do was to just make it look a bit nicer from the top. So the rocker cover, which was um, not very pretty to be fair, I sent that over to CY Finishes and they powder coated it for me in a really nice bright red. So what I'm going to do now is box up the rest of his bits. I've got to remove a broken stud out of the um, exhaust manifold for it. I'm going to clean up the oil filler cap for him so that's uh, all done and sorted and uh, and yeah, I think he, he should be happy with that. I'm definitely happy with it. Uh, last couple of touches on the boat cylinder head was to just flat block the Volvo sign back out of the rocker cover. I just thought it'd be a nice touch. And then I've polished up the cap as well because that was um, all pitted and corroded. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I think it's a good result. So that's the end of this video today. Uh, thanks for everyone that's subscribed so far. We're getting really close to a thousand subscribers now So if you are watching this and you haven't subscribed it would mean a lot to me if you could um, I really desperately want to get to a thousand, but have a good weekend people and I'll see you on the next video